you have been active in drug prevention, drug education, drug policy. How do you, in in present time, describe Drug Free America? To, to just put it simply, we're a drug prevention and drug policy organization developing strategies that promote drug prevention and sustained recovery. So that could take many different phases. Um, as you know, we have a division on drug-free workplace policies that helps small businesses, mostly small businesses, develop drug-free workplace programs, and we do training about that. Um, but then we also have this new information that we have on the environment, so that's important to us. Um, we do all the legislative tracking with the drug policy stuff, and I think that there are so many awesome organizations out there, and it's kind of looking at, you know, okay, this organization has a lot of great information on educational materials, so maybe we don't need to create a whole bunch of educational materials. We can partner and use these, but we notice that nobody's tracking um, marijuana policy or prescription drug policy or just drug policy in general. So we're going to take the burden on of that, you know, and we also know that a lot of organizations can't do policy work because of their funding prohibits them from lobbying. So with drug free, we have a sister organization, save our society from drugs, which allows us to direct lobbying. So all of that, those 1200 pieces of legislation that we follow each year, we can take specific action on them and we can say vote no because of these reasons, or this would be a terrible idea because of this, or this would be an amazing opportunity to promote prevention if you pass this legislation. And there aren't a lot of organizations that do that kind of work. So we kind of, you know, make sure that we fill those missing gaps. Well, that's excellent. And you know, I've known you now several years. And each year that I get to know you, I, I just personally love you more because I think you're wonderful as a person but also what your organization does and what you do and the way that you reach out to other organizations, other individuals such as me. It, it doesn't work without everybody. And everybody means professional scientists. It means the epidemiologist. It means the public health and the public safety specialists. But it also means the community members. This does not work without parents, without teachers, without law enforcement, without a friend. You know, we always talk about youth having a very important adult in their life. And that adult doesn't have to be a parent. It doesn't have to be a teacher. It could be somebody at their community volunteer center. It could be their next door neighbor. So it's information that isn't made for a small group of people. It's information that needs to be distributed out to everybody because everybody can use it in amazing ways. And you're the perfect example of that. I mean, you get these messages out across multimedia things, but also in the most awesome ways that we wouldn't even think about uh, through all of your creative adventures and things that you do. So it's just great having people like you on board with everything. Thank you. And Drug Free America Foundation does so many things that the regular mom, uh, the teacher, the, the business professional doesn't think of on a daily basis. I know that uh, in tracking legislation, uh, this is a significant thing because as we wake up in the morning and make our coffee and get our kids ready to school, uh, we're not aware of what's going on in Tallahassee as relates to drug policies, uh, drug future, uh, tracks and trends, and you guys do that. And I, I think that that's something that I want you to tell the viewer about how, one, you do that, and two, how significant that is and how that kind of uh, dominoes down to the community and what that might look like. Right. So whenever we talk about drug policy, I think people like run for the hills or they hide under their kitchen table because it is very intimidating. We're asking you to talk with an elected official. And for people who don't do that on a regular basis, these are people that we kind of are, we think of as, you know, uh, somebody that we're afraid to talk to, but they're just regular old people. They're the same as us and they're representing a constituency and we're part of that constituency and they don't know this information if we don't give it to them. And I use an example of why policy is important. And for anybody who's heard me talk before, they're probably sick of this story, but it just shows you how decisions that we make every day in our life are impacted by the policies that are around us. And drug prevention can be really great with educational materials and dissemination of those materials. But if we're not working on policies that talk about how our environment around us is 
affected by drugs, then we don't make any headway. So for example, there, there's a whole bunch of policies every day that we all use without even thinking about. The first thing you do when you get in your car is you put on your seatbelt. And why do you do that? Because there's a policy that says, click it or ticket. You know, one, you want to save your life if you're in an accident. And two, you don't want to get a ticket and have to pay money for not having your seatbelt on. That's a policy that was put in place to protect the public safety of the constituents in an area. In this case, everywhere. But the story that I often tell is when I went to college many moons ago, I went to uh, St. Pete College, and back then it was a junior college, and this was in the mid-90s, and there weren't the smoke-free policies that we have now on college campus. So I was never a smoker, I never smoked cigarettes, but when I got to college the first day, I walked onto campus and I saw that people were smoking. And I was like, oh, this is so different from high school. There's people that are walking around, they look so cool, with their cigarettes and even though this wasn't something that I would have ever done because I just wasn't a smoker the next day on my way to school I pulled up at 7-eleven I bought a pack of camel special lights and you know I walked onto campus and I lit up a cigarette and I started smoking just because I could right. it was a I was allowed to and I didn't like it thankfully it just tasted gross in my mouth and it wasn't something that I that I caught on to but I would never have made that decision had it been a smoke-free campus and so when we talk about putting policies in place that it, it isn't just so that it restricts behaviors it's also so that it prevents behaviors because it, I could have that could have been a very unlucky situation for me I could have taken those first you know puffs of a cigarette and I could have became a, a nicotine addict. It, it could have been something that and next thing you know, I'm a pack a day smoker um, if I would have really liked it. And thankfully I did not But it just goes to show you that policies impact the decisions that we make every day in our life. So through Save Our Society and Drug Free America Foundation, we have a really cool um, tracking tool that sends us emails every day with our keywords in it. And we have about 50 keywords that we track, um, such as uh, drug courts, marijuana, fentanyl, uh, prescription drugs, different things like that. So any legislation that has any of these words in it comes through to an email to me every single day. Sometimes there's 300 pieces of legislation, sometimes there's three. And I quickly sift through by reading the intro paragraph to the legislation to determine is this really a piece of drug policy legislation or does it just happen to have one of these words in it? And sometimes it just happens to have a word in it and you delete and move on. Um, but sometimes it's, it's uh, maybe a bill that establishes problem solving courts in the state of Minnesota. And so that's something that we would support and we would want to track and we want to want to help move this legislation to fruition. So we would track it and then the system tells me every time the bill starts making progress, it tells me who sponsored the bill. It tells me what committee it's in. So I know who to contact. Then through another system we have, we can set up these advocacy alerts. And what that is, is I can then send you an email that says, hey, Minnesota is looking at legislation that would enhance their problem solving courts. This is why problem solving courts are imp important. It gives people the opportunity who might have a substance use disorder to go into treatment instead of jail. But the court monitors them to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And at the end of all of this, it brings them back into so society instead of, you know, having them in jail for a couple of years if they follow all the rules correctly. And this would be a great idea. So contact the legislature in Minnesota and tell them to vote yes and get this bill passed. Then what you can just sit at your computer, you can click a button and the next thing you know, you've sent this letter um, to Minnesota and you have been a shining star in public uh, policy trying to get something um, passed. So it, it gives everybody a very simple opportunity to participate in our, our process of, of developing laws and policies that protect us both public health and uh, public safety wise. You know, um, when you were talking about uh, going onto campus and the cigarettes, it, it got me thinking how almost exactly similarly I picked up uh, Virginia Slim's menthol lights. Um, in this regard, I believe it was a, a, a girlfriend or something who we were, but I felt like this was sort of some kind of rite of passage or something like that. Even though my mother and father smoked, I had no interest, but it was when I entered a certain environment and anyway, so I did smoke for a while. I never got up to the pack and eventually I quit. But I can tell you though, that when I moved here to Florida, 
from New Jersey. I have four children, so they were, one was going into middle school, one was going into high school, and the other two were in grammar school. And the one that went into high school, he had his first freedoms, if you will, of uh, walking to, you know, convenience stores, one, and that his bus stop was right there at one. Anyway, long story short, he comes home one day and he says to me, mom, I feel like I'm missing out. And I said, missing out on what? And he goes, drinking, drinking alcohol. And I said, oh, are people doing it at school? He goes, well, it's more the convenience store because every morning I'm waiting for my bus. Sometimes it's late. I go inside, I get a hot chocolate or a candy bar or something for the day. And there's beer pong and there's stacks of, you know, posters and and I just, it's colorful. I, I feel like I'm missing out. And so it dawned on me that New Jersey didn't have that. Now, as a parent, I didn't know that it was different state to state, but isn't that an example of policy? Now, fast forward that 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, depending on the age of your child, and now that bus stop could be close to a marijuana dispensary. And now that child is seeing signs that are promoting marijuana use on the way to school, whether his bus stop is there or whether it's a dispensary on the way that his parent is driving him there. And think of the ways that these dispensaries are marketing their products. Um, we tried to put some really tight restrictions in the state of Florida on how, that they, on how they could market, but a law is only as good as it's enforced. And um, today just happens to be the marijuana holiday. And already this morning, I've gotten emails and text messages from marijuana dispensaries. I don't go to a marijuana dispensary. I've never been there. I'm not there. I don't, I'm not on their clientele list. So somehow I'm getting unsolicited ads from these dispensaries about a holiday that you're supposed to smoke your medicine on. So what, you know, what is that about? And if I'm getting them, are other youth getting them? And then outside the 420 advertisements, you have, um, you know, different dispensaries using cartoon characters, or you have products that are brightly colored or soda pops or candy. So you not only have the, the pressure from the, the tobacco industries that you still see, you know, in ads, but not as much because everybody's kind of understood that this isn't a great thing to do, but now you have the vaping, you have the ads from the alcohol industry, and now you have the ads from the marijuana industry. So our youth are being bombarded from every corner of, you know, these things. So uh, imagine your son saying that to you saying, I feel like I'm missing out. At least he came to you and said that there are so many kids that wouldn't voice that. And the next thing you know, they just feel like they're missing out. So they're going to try it one time and maybe they try it one time. And like, I didn't like the cigarette. They don't use it anymore. Right. Right. But and, and the thing is with, with laws, of course, we have age restrictions, but we all understand that the clever marketing and the colorful colors and the cartoon characters and putting a uh, high THC in gummy bears. I mean, give me a break. This is intended to be appealing to the younger generation to get them earlier on as a customer. I mean, it's a no brainer. Absolutely. We know data tells us that 90% of addiction starts in adolescence. So if you're not getting them in adolescence, the chances of them becoming, um, addicted and needing your product later on in life is very slim. So that's why we really talk to parents and say that, you know, this is why it's so important that you talk to your youth. It might be an uncomfortable conversation, but it's a conversation that you have to have because if you can just get them to not use until they're 18 or, t or 21, the likelihood of them ever having problematic behavior when it comes to tobacco, alcohol, marijuana, or any other drug significantly declines. So it's just so important for that message to youth.